call this special meeting of the uh, Miami Township Board of Trustees to order on Tuesday, September 17th, 2024. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. So, would you like to do roll call? Mr. Kraut. Here. Mr. Posey. Present. Uh, I now motion to adjourn into an executive session for conferences with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are the subject of pending or imminent court action in accordance with ORC 121.22 G3. I second. Mr. Kraut. Aye. Mr. Posey. Aye. 6 p.m. and I called this meeting of the Miami Township Board of Trustees to order on Tuesday, September 17, 2024. Please uh, rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Culp. Here. Mr. Posey. Here. Mr. Morris. Reading of casualties. Chief Stegelmeyer, will you please Good proceed evening, with the reading the of casualties? The following is a list of the first responder casualties for the period of September 4th through September the 17th of 2024. Battalion Chief Christopher Eddy from the Greene County Fire Rescue in Georgia. End of watch September 4th, 2024. Police Officer Zane Coolidge from the Phoenix Police Department in Arizona, end of watch September 6, 2024. Police Officer Jamie Roman from the Philadelphia Police Department in Pennsylvania, end of watch September 10, 2024. Corporal Brandon Schreiber from the Newton County Sheriff's Department in Indiana, end of watch September 11, 2024. And Motor Carrier Officer Daniel Kersetter Stettler, he's from the Michigan State Police uh, Michigan, end of watch is September 15th, 2024. Please join me in a moment of silence for these first responders. Thank you. So tonight we have a guest presentation by Christy Newton from the RTA. Welcome, Mrs. Newton, Miss Newton, and you may proceed. Thanks so much for having me. I'm Christy Newton, the Communications and Community Relations Manager at the Greater Dayton RTA. I'm here today to talk about a new route that we launched on September 8th. Before I get into details about the new route, I just wanna do quick facts about the Greater Dayton RTA. We are the public transit agency that serves all of Montgomery County and parts of Greene County. We give six million rides per year. Most of our riders are going to jobs, medical appointments, and educational opportunities. We have 19 bus routes. This includes the new launch of the West Community Connector. We also offer Connect services, and I'll get into a little bit more about those in a minute, but first I wanna talk about the West Community Connector. So the new route connects to 12 other routes, three connect on demand zones, and three transit centers, creating better access to grocery stores, medical facilities, and employment opportunities across Montgomery County. What's cool about this route is that it, it doesn't go downtown, so you get all your connections along the west side of Montgomery County without having to travel downtown. Um, for your area, it runs along West Alex to Water Tower Lane, Imperial Road, uh, State Route 725, Byers Road, and Lyons as it heads to the South Hub right next door. Uh, with the launch of the new route, we are also, oh, we have been rolling out our new bus stop signs, but because this is a new route, all of the signs for the route will be new. This is a quick look at what they look like. We still have the uh, text feature for our customers so that they can text to see exactly when their bus is coming. We also have our website and transit app for our customers to plan their trips as well. As I mentioned, we also have uh, our Connect services. We have Connect On Demand, 
This includes uh, our Connect On Demand zones, which right now is free to travel anywhere within a zone using Uber or Lyft. Uh, we also have our paratransit services, which is our white buses that you see around town. That's our ADA uh, service. And then we have our 5310 program. Um, right now we're doing uh, Bring a Friend Free. It's $5 per trip. It's for uh, individuals 65 and older and people with disabilities. And it's for essential trips. To uh, ride RTA, we do what's called cashless payment with the use of tap pay. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> I'll point her in the right direction. So we use what's called tap pay aboard our buses. It's our cashless fare payment system. You could use a card or you can use the transit app to um, pay and plan your trip all within the app. We do what's called monthly caps and daily caps. So currently, right now, uh, you never pay more than $3 a day. Uh, what we had found in the past is when people were using cash to um, pay their fare, they were paying as they go because they didn't have upfront cash to pay for like a monthly pass or the daily pass. So they ended up spending way more than what a monthly pass would have cost. Whereas this, we can cap them as they we'll cap them as they go. So once they hit that rolling 31 day period, they don't pay more than the monthly cap. Our board did recently um, just approve fare increases. These will go into effect beginning January 1st. They're gonna be annual fare increases through uh, January 2027. Um, we haven't had a significant fare increase since 2009. We did have a fare increase in 2018 for our fixed route services. So it's been a long time since we've increased fares. We are hiring. Um, we're looking for fixed route drivers. The more drivers we have, the more service we can put out on the street. So if you know anyone, send them our way. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you for coming out. Thanks. I had one question. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that was the total <laughs> presentation. Um, it's quick. Okay. Uh, question. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, I was. Th how how has your number of uh, riders uh, been over the last ten years? Is it? I don't need exact numbers. Is it generally increasing, staying same, dropping? So obviously COVID happened, so we did experience yeah. a decrease um, right. in riders, but prior to that, we had hit like our highest riders we had seen from what I remember. Um, from there, we, we did see a decrease. We were at 9 million rides per year, um, but we are down to 6 million now, but we have been increasing slowly since COVID. So it was lower than 6 million, but we've been slowly rising. So, uh, so do you anticipate, wow, do you anticipate now the number of rides, riders will continue to increase or level off or, or drop? What's your f prediction for, say, the next five years? Um, I'm not sure what our prediction is for the next five years, but my hope is that riders would uh, continue to use our services, especially as we, you know, roll out, like the West Community Connector, creating better access to jobs and um, medical appointments and other essential trips within the county. Okay. Uh, the reason I was asking that, uh, years ago I thought of this, if, as the population of Dayton decreases, the number of riders would most likely decrease also, uh, although you're countywide. I know a lot of the riders, uh, I think the majority of riders are downtown. So, uh, but costs, of course, keep increasing. So if ridership decreases and cost increases, do you have a way to handle that issue? I would say that is part of the reason why we are raising fares. Yeah. <laughs> There's many factors that come into play, but that is one of many factors. The rising cost to put service out on the street right. is, is one of them. Yeah, you've got fuel and maintenance and just yes. purchasing equipment. So that's all. I just kind of wondered if you were able to deal with that long term. Yeah. Um, any other revenue source that it, I know revenue right now is some of it's from proper uh, from sales tax, correct? Yes, most of our revenue 
is from sales tax. Oh, well, and, I ri and riders' fees, of course. I'm sorry. Ticket ticket fee, you know, the cost can, of riding. Of I can give you the exact breakdown if you want. I can no. get, I can get in touch with Erica. That's who I was chatting with um, to set up this meeting if you would like. But I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head. No, I wasn't looking for a detailed break, breakdown. I'm just trying to make sure you have a good long-range plan for keeping things going. That's all. That, that's all I had. Uh, okay. I, I feel that you're, you know, I feel a pinch, so just hoping you're able to deal with that. That's why I asked the questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. Tip. Are there any questions on the consent agenda? So I motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I will second. Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. So Mr. Schweiker, you have resolution 79-2024 as part of the new business. Good evening, board. Uh, this resolution is a uh, is tender into a joint construction agreement with Montgomery County. Um, during the Lamb Road renovation project with the bridge, I learned that in 2025, they were going to continue the rest of the phase as the second part of their project. Uh, we identified one cul-de-sac off of Lamb that is our responsibility, rule of court. And basically, this resolution is we'd like to participate with them on this specific project with this specific road in 2025 uh, we are still working on our long-range plan for what we're going to do beyond that i do anticipate coming back in the fall to work with miamisburg as we have in years past but this specific resolution is just to participate with montgomery county on this one road and i'd be happy to answer any questions regarding this resolution yep. thank you board right, thanks so this is the uh, portion of the meeting when miami township residents are invited to share their thoughts with the board your comments are valued and are taken into consideration. The board will not engage in dialogue at this time. Presentations are limited to five minutes each. Are there any uh, citizens who would like to address the board? And seeing none, uh, I move to close the public comments portion and move to the consideration of votes of resolutions and consider votes for the resolutions and motion. So I motion to approve resolution 79, 2024, a resolution to authorize the township administrator to enter into a joint construction agreement with Montgomery County. Can I get a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. We do not have any public hearings tonight, so we'll go straight into department head comments. Police Chief Stegelmeyer. I have none this evening, thank you. All right. Public Works Director John Schweikert. I have none tonight, board, thank you. Community Development Director Alex Carlson. Uh, just quickly, board, um, on our website, you can find a request for public comments uh, related to how Miami Township should regulate adult use uh, marijuana. Uh, we started this public comment period earlier this month, and it runs through the end of the month. Um, we've gotten very thoughtful responses so far. Uh, if anybody at home is interested uh, in submitting responses, you can go to our website, uh, miamitownship.com, where we have a uh, series of prompts, questions, um, that you can respond to by email with your thoughts. So again, we're running that survey through the end of the month, uh, September 30th. Uh, we appreciate all the comments we've gotten, and that's all. all right. uh, Finance Director Clay McCord. I have nothing tonight. Administrator Chris Snyder. I have a few congratulations to make note of tonight, uh, board. Uh, the first is I want to congratulate uh, Township Residents Berman and Violet Lair. Uh, I recently attended a celebration for them, uh, along with communications manager Jill Drury on uh, celebrating their 101st birthdays jointly, along with their 80th wedding anniversary. Uh, Mr. Lair was a township trustee as well from 1978 through 1997. He also uh, served uh, his country in World War II. Uh, he has one son and several grandchildren in the area as well, so we were happy to celebrate those significant uh, milestones in their lives um, and appreciate his service to the township for almost 20 years. Um, I'd also like to congratulate our public works director, John Schweikert, on his recent graduation from the Center for Local Government Leadership Academy. So he attended uh, courses throughout this year. I uh, appreciate his efforts uh, expanding his knowledge base and some of his contacts with other officials around the state. So. Uh, also would like to congratulate Alex Carlson, our community development director, who was recently elected to the Ohio APA 
the American Planning Association Board of Trustees. So uh, congratulations, Alex and John, on those uh, accomplishments and look forward to all that you've, all the knowledge that you've gained from those and certainly the contacts and I know Alex will achieve through being on that board, so. Um, also wanna make note uh, to our residents, uh, you may see improvements are underway. Uh, again, thanks to our public works and uh, parks department. Uh, within our park system, we allocated uh, a considerable amount of funds this year from the American Rescue Plan. Uh, again, thank you to the board for allowing us to move forward on those projects. Uh, those projects are underway and I know um, several of the parks, you can see uh, some of the improvements that have already occurred and more will be coming. So right. with awesome. that, that's all I have. That's great. Elected official comments now, Mr. Matthews. Uh, nothing tonight, thank you. Mr. Posey. I have none. And I have none tonight. We're going to go directly into a work session. Uh, we have two work sessions tonight and we will not be taking any further, any further action following the work session. I motion to enter into a work session to discuss the comprehensive plan future land use review for new, the Newmark Office Park and to discuss the appointment process. Second. Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. 